What's up YouTube, this is Will with Northwest Aqua Hobby. So I'm gonna be pretty busy this weekend, it's actually Saturday, um, but I figured I'd give you guys a quick fish room update before I get to my weekend business. Um, I haven't checked in with you guys on the fish room in a while, and that's because a lot of things have been changing, so I'm gonna kinda go over those in this video. So this is Saturday morning after the 4th of July. I'm currently wearing my Dustin's Fish Tanks shirt. Um, you're probably gonna be watching this on Sunday and there's a lot to cover, so go ahead and grab yourself a cup of coffee and come along for the ride. All right, folks, so I think we'll go ahead and go through each fish tank one by one. That way you get a nice view of the entire fish room. So here we have my 20 gallon long. Um, this is primarily Blue's tank. He's an electric blue Acara, and then I do have one Siamese algae eater in here. Uh, the idea with this tank was to plant it with Valisneria, uh, both, both Valisneria spiralis as well as Valisneria americana. I did change the substrate in here and when I moved, um, I had a significant change in water parameters. So I was hoping that this Valisneria would blow up and just absolutely take off. But to be honest, um, here's one of my trials and tribulations, I guess, with the aquarium hobby. This tank has really not done all that well. Uh, you'll notice there's a lot of algae on some of these these leaves. Oh, what's up, Blue? And I'm not really sure what is the cause of that. I, I suspect it's a water parameter change and then potentially excess light. When I moved this tank, I did a complete um, rip down. I cleaned all of the glass. Typically, I leave algae on the back, which is a, an extremely bioactive surface. And that acts essentially as a nutrient sponge, taking up excess nutrients and whatnot. But when I cleaned the tank and got rid of all of that algae, I think that what happened is I experienced a spike in nutrients within the water column. And uh, essentially all of that algae that once was on the glass is now growing on the plants. And the plants are having a tough time combating that algae. Uh, I think I'll get it you know, back to normal in time, but it's definitely a, a slow process. And to monitor that, I've been using um, just this little notepad here. I would highly recommend um, purchasing a notepad and just taking notes on your tank. What I've been doing here is taking notes about how much I'm dosing fertilizer within this tank. For a while there, I was dosing one pump of Aquarium Co-op's Easy Green per day. I was actually trying to boost up the nutrient load in there and I think that that was also probably part of the problem with the algae. So I've dialed that back and I'm doing once every other day, uh, roughly. And what I'm doing is every date listed on the left-hand column here is when I've done an application of um, fertilizer. And that just helps me keep track of, you know, how much I'm dosing, if I miss days and whatnot. I've also, I make notes like I put the light down to 50% on, on 531. So that's just telling me like, hey, I made a change that day. I've been dosing this often. You know, if you're keeping notes like this and then you notice a spike or a change within the water um, quality, then it helps you um, be able to attribute what the cause might be for that problem. As far as the fish go though, they're super healthy. I'm running one sponge filter in there. I've got a little bit of duckweed on the top and blue eats like a champ. Uh, tiger, my Siamese algae eater is doing wonderfully. So that's this tank. It's kind of a, a problem tank at the moment, but I'm slowly getting it under control. If you notice all of the new growth in here, like that plant's doing really well, that plant, that plant, that plant, that plant, that plant, you know, there's tons of new growth in here. So I think that really, I just got to get rid of um, that existing algae. And once I do that, I think this tank will be off and running. So this is a significant point of change. Previously, I had a wood racking system in here. And you know, I didn't really trust the structural uh, design of that previous rack. So I wanted something that was a little bit more trustworthy and holding a lot of weight. Um, you know, it would suck to have like the top shelf break and take all the tanks out below it. So I decided to go ahead and get myself a heavy duty steel racking system. I picked this, uh, this guy up at Home Depot. Each one of these shelves can hold up to 800 pounds and I have five shelves here. So the plan for this tank is actually, or for this racking system, is to set it up as a series of 5.5 gallon tanks. I really like 
um, 5.5s because they're cheap, they're super easy to maintain, easy to light, um, they're easy to move if I have to move again because when I moved, you know, three or four months ago, uh, that was an extremely long and taxing process when you're moving bigger tanks like these, you get pretty worn out in moving um, very quickly. So converting these all to 5.5 gallon tanks, I think is gonna be awesome, um, you know, for future convenience, if you will. One thing that I don't like about this racking system is the actual shelves themselves. They are uh, particle board, and if you know anything about particle board, this kind of material and water are, really do not go well together. This stuff will soak up water like a sponge, become soft and deform. So what I'm gonna do is use my dad's table saw and cut some probably three quarter inch plywood and replace these panels with solid plywood. That way they're gonna be more water resistant and less prone to warp. But hey, I really like this racking system. I think it looks great. Uh, being able to hold 800 pounds puts my mind at ease, so I'm pretty stoked on that. I guess we'll go ahead and touch on the cylinder tank. This guy has basically just been completely neglected, to be honest. Uh, I don't have any fish in here, just my um, snails, pond snails, or bladder snails, one of the two. Uh, so I do have some algae in here. If you look in there, I've got some. Yeah, you can, there you go. Now you can see the algae. Quite a bit of it in there, but I've noticed in the last like, you know, three or four weeks, the Valisneria has really started to take off in here. And I think that's starting to combat that algae. And I think, you know, in a couple months time, that algae should be gone. And I think this thing's just gonna be completely loaded with um, Valisneria. So down here, we have my big custom coffee table. My dad made this for me a while back. He actually picked this, this log off of his property. He owns 10 acres on Whidbey Island in Puget Sound and uh, made this custom coffee table for me. Pretty crazy, but this log is 100 years old. We counted all of these rings and we lost track right at around 100. So we'll call it 100 years old, but pretty incredible. And that thing weighs about 300 pounds. So it takes two to three guys to move this, this table. Whenever I move, that thing is quite the chore. Uh, but plans for this, I'm gonna move, when I get 5.5 gallons tanks, you know, to fill up this whole racking system, I'm gonna move my girlfriend's beta tank over to here. And that's gonna be the only tank that's gonna be sitting on that coffee table. And then moving on to the natural beta habitat tank, um, things are coming along in here. If you haven't checked out my videos, touching base on my plans for this tank, I will have a link in the description below. Um, maybe I'll put a playlist down there or a couple of links to videos that I've, I've done on this tank. But anyway, in short, I'm doing a dry start method here. You'll notice I have a bunch of dwarf sag planted all throughout back here. I have one mound as a focal point in the first um, third of the aquarium. And this is just your standard Amazon sword and things are going great in here. So notice all of these, these leaves right in the middle. Those are all new leaves that have sprouted up since I planted, um, planted this tank. Um, pretty soon I'm probably gonna go ahead and snip off all of these old leaves. They're starting to yellow, so they're not doing a whole lot of good for the tank anymore. And then over here on this side, I have more uh, dwarf sag and that stuff's starting to grow in pretty well. One thing I did notice is these plants are actually fairly old. They've been trimmed a number of times. So I think they're kind of stunted and they're you know, kind of getting towards the end of their life cycle. Um, but nonetheless, they are putting up new growth. And I think in no time, they're gonna be sending runners. And basically, ultimately the goal for this tank is to have the whole bottom, you know, just covered with dwarf sag. And then to let this Amazon sword just go absolutely nuts and fill in this whole area here. And then once I get to that stage, which will probably take a couple of months, um, I will fill up the tank to the first third with water. And then I'm gonna have one beta in here. That beta is gonna be living like a king and loving this tank. This tank is fully lit by natural light, at least for now. I have this, this massive window here, which is Southern facing. So it gets a fair amount of light, but to be honest, I have no, noticed that it only gets probably a couple hours of direct sunlight a day. 
So I think what I am gonna do, at least while I'm growing all of this in, is I'm gonna put a fluorescent light on the top just to go ahead and give it a boost so that that carpet will fill in faster. Uh, I do have a glass lid on this tank. I have no air gaps in here, so it is retaining all of the humidity. And I try to take the lid off and spray all the plants once or twice a day just to keep things nice and humid in there. You will notice these two Java fern leaves. I just threw those in there um, just to see if they're gonna go ahead and put off some plantlets. If they do, that would be awesome. I'm not gonna keep them in here, but just for propagation purposes, I put these leaves in here and I'm hoping that they will uh, replicate. And if they do, I will put uh, more of the babies in this plant, which are in this tank. So I will go ahead and cover this one. I forgot uh, to mention actually what's going on with these tanks. So I'll cover those now. Uh, this is my uh, Zebra Danio tank. And you'll notice on the top, I have duckweed as well as, um, oh God, Salvinia minima, that's it. And very low light, I have it, actually this is a Fluval 3.0 and I have it set on the lowest setting to be able to uh, accommodate my Java fern as well as Anubius in here. And I did a video on attaching all of these plants to this piece of driftwood. So if you missed that video, I'll have a link in the description below for you to check that out. Moving over here, I have my Immerse Grow uh, Java Moss tank. And as you can see, things have really come in in there. Uh, it's looking great. I also have a little bit of Ludwigia in the back. Down here, we have my girlfriend's beta tank and it looks pretty good. Uh, when we moved, you can see the Anubias did go through a little bit of shock and some of those leaves are melting back, but new leaves have come up um, until it gets fully reestablished. We are experiencing a little bit of algae, but that will go away in time. But as far as the water quality goes, it's great and Clarence is loving his habitat. Uh, down in here somewhere I do have a snail. He's really hard to find though. Yeah. Anyways guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you liked this fish room update. Um, I gotta run, I'm actually gonna be going off the island and going kayaking this weekend so i gotta get to that but i'm gonna go ahead and edit this video and try and get it uploaded for you guys on sunday and hey happy fourth of july everybody i hope you made it a good one and had plenty of time with your friends and family and uh, i'll catch you in the next video